thrilled to be joined now by Corporal James Craigmile. And if you're a fan of Live PD, you know this guy. We're so happy to have you here. Thanks, I'm very happy to be here. So you've seen this course in action now. How relatable are these obstacles to real life and what you're doing on the job? I think that uh, the entire course is set up to apply to real world scenarios, which is how we train in canine. Take for instance the car slalom here. Seeing the dogs in and out of these cars and seeing how they maneuver through the doors, through the windows, that's exactly what we do on the streets. This is a little bit different. It's competition, right? It is, yeah. On the streets, we're not constrained to the time frame that you are here, so it does put a little bit more stress on the handlers. Fire escape now. How does that relate to what you're used to with your canine? Well, whenever you go into a building, there's always stairs. So the dogs have to go up the stairs independently by themselves. And then they sometimes have to go up with the handlers as well. Whenever they have to chase a suspect up the fire escape, it really helps for the dogs to be able to go upstairs. Some stairs, they can see through them. Uh, so the dogs have to be confident in order to go up those. So Lore is your canine. How do you think he would do here on high jump? Oh, Lore would do very well on high jump. He's a big dog, very agile. He's got what we call ups. Uh, so he's a very good, very good at the high jump. This is also applicable to the real world whenever the dogs have to jump over fences, be it a four foot fence, six foot fence, or obstacles to get to a suspect. Rope bridge, how does that relate? A lot of times our dogs, they go in places that aren't stable for Mother Earth that they usually walk on. And the movement really sometimes messes with the dog but we train our dogs to work through all of those movements and shakiness and stuff. So addicts, you know, they're walking on the different trusses in the attics. Sometimes it can be cumbersome. Though. Splashdown. Some dogs love water, some dogs hate it. Do you train your canines to go in the water? We don't train our canines to go in the water. A lot of handlers don't train their dogs to go into the water. So I think in round one, this one has been the most challenging for the bunny. Absolutely, some can't get their dogs out, so it just depends on what it is. Usually the underdogs love swimming in the water. How would Lore, your canine, do on this course? Lore would do well until the splashdown. <laughs> splashdown, I would end up having to pick him up and we would go in the water together. Oh, that would be good. We might see that tonight, right? <laughs> yes, you might see that. The dog house, how realistic is it for what you guys do every day? It's extremely realistic. We train for world scenarios or real life scenarios when we're on the streets. Having to <laughs> knock over a wall to get to a suspect or to get to somebody who's barricaded behind something is something that our dogs do that we teach them. And then having to jump through a window, oftentimes the only way to get into a building is through the same window that a suspect went in. So we have to get our dogs to go through windows. Going through the maze, it's like going through a wooded area, swampy area, stuff like that, where our dogs have to go through confined, congested areas, as well as the handler. You're getting smacked in the face with tree branches, limbs, and stuff like that, so the dog has to be neutral to that. Low crawling? Low crawling is similar to um, houses in the Midwest have crawl spaces underneath or in attics. A lot of times the suspects will go in crawl spaces or attics. And our dogs have to be comfortable going in those tight spaces like that. Then you move over to the boxes up, suspects go high. The dogs have to be able to be agile to climb up boxes, wood, boulders, stuff like that out in the environments. Um, then you get upstairs and you go through the tubes. A lot of suspects, they'll hide in tubes and culverts underneath the roads or in other confined spaces. So the dogs have to be comfortable going in them as well. And then you get over to the door breach where the dog has to end up pulling the door open. Oftentimes suspects will get themselves barricaded behind a door and sometimes the dogs will open the door or move whatever it is they can to get to the suspect. Watch, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. And then the ultimate to take down. I think that's what everybody loves seeing. Uh, you know, that is something that we teach our, our dogs to apprehend somebody. It teaches them to hold the suspect there, to gain compliance from the suspect through pain compliance, or to distract the suspect so we can move in to take them in custody. So everything that you see here in round three is exactly what we train on for real world scenarios. Great insider knowledge. Great to have you here. Thank, Thank you for, you for that. Me.